Welcome to GUI and in web browsers weekly sync. It's 17th of April 2019. Uh, today I will be uh, moderating this call. Um, uh, Dietrich will be taking notes. Uh, Oli is not able to join, uh, but we have uh, a lot of people today, as usually. It's a very friendly call and people like to join it. So if, you, uh, if anyone has any last minute uh, agenda items, uh, add it to the notes. I post it on the chat. And uh, unless, yeah. So I think we, just, we will just start with uh, regular team updates and demos. Um, turns out I'm always the first one. So everyone else has some additional time to, to add their own updates. And I'll, I'll just uh, start sharing my screen and give you some updates. Uh, yep. So, um, so the, I think the main update is that I just shipped a new beta release of IPFS Companion. Um, this is a release that does not include a lot of user facing uh, uh, changes, but there's a one very important uh, thing that's feature detection of Chrome sockets APIs at the runtime. And what that means is the build that we publish to Chrome uh, Web Store, which is somewhere, yeah, it's here. So the build that uh, we publish to the Chrome Web Store, it, ru it runs in regular Chrome, but if you install it on Chromium-based browser such as Brave, um, or something else uh, that gave access to Chrome Sockets APIs to IPFS Companion, then our the same code will detect that and upgrade user experience um, as described in, uh, in Chromium Sockets. One second. Uh, yep. Uh, I gave a demo on current state of embedded gateway last week, I think. But basically what happened now is we shipped this to the beta channel. And if you download this Brave package and load it to the latest uh, Brave Nightly, uh, you will be able to experience it uh, on your own. Make sure, uh, just uh, make, uh, I need to make, make a disclaimer that you are not able to use Chrome sockets yet when you installed from Chrome Web Store. Uh, that requires small patch on the Brave site, but we are working with Brave to uh, make it a seamless experience. So basically the goal is to, uh, for people to, Oh gosh, really? <laughs> I just used it today. No. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so you basically just installed uh, Brave Nightly. Then you install IPFS Companion Beta from Chrome Web Store. And you will be able to use it. Uh, hopefully next week. Uh, so sorry that it's not that very visual. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, share why this beta is important. And for something that's uh, out there right now, uh, we've introduced uh, configurable logger levels in IPFS Companion. I think I have an IPFS Companion here. Uh, is it the latest one? I don't think so. Maybe I need to update it or something. Uh, yep. And Or maybe later. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, you are now able to specify uh, the levels of debug that you want to see. So if you are running embedded node and you want to see what's happening in the P2P, very low level stuff, you are able, now able to, uh, on preferences screen, uh, specify uh, namespaces for logs that you want to read. And then you will see uh, color-coded uh, logs from different uh, parts of our uh, IPFS and IP, lib P2P stack. Um, 
you can filter out uh, things that you don't care, the usual. Uh, everyone who is familiar with JSIPFS libraries uh, already knows uh, how to, to do it. Now you can do it in IPFS Companion. It will be very useful when we continue uh, working uh, on embedded nodes. Uh, that's a bit long for beta release. Sorry about that. Uh, I shipped uh, some uh, changes to JSIPFS related to uh, Brave integration. Uh, I created a proposal to switch CID from ba default representation of CIDs from base 58 to base uh, 32. Um, the discussion uh, continues in uh, linked issues and had some problems with. Uh, uh, bad word filters uh, that uh, <laughs> got triggered by our translations. Um, but that's about it. Uh, some the patches related to break integration are uh, not really blocking me, but uh, they need to la probably land sooner than later uh, if we want to uh, get uh, the feature parity with GoIPFS. And my plan for next week is to have some meetings related to IPFS Camp, uh, ENS, and I want to continue working on the embedded uh, gateway for Brave, namely add re range request for JSIPFS gateway. So we have like seeking in video playback and, uh, and do general cleanup of uh, HTTP gateway. Uh, so I can finally move to peer-to-peer -to -peer transport. Uh, I hope that was not too long. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a quick question. So sure. what's the companion release process? So right now those changes are in beta. Uh, what triggers the move to stable and then how long is the process from there to, yes. be, to show up in, in uh, uh, Chrome App Store? Yeah, so uh, we usually uh, ship uh, a beta and it uh, stays in beta for about one week. And if there are no issues reported, we basically just promote it to the stable channel. Uh, in this case, we have uh, a lot of things that need to land in JSIPFS before we are able to switch to release version. And I don't want to ship to stable channel when we still basically use a forked ver version of JSIPFS. Uh, so that may take a little longer. Uh, on the other hand, there's no big, uh, problem with shipping that to stable channel right now because people on stable channel usually use uh, IPFS desktop anyway. Uh, but it would not be very clean, so I would like to avoid that. And we also uh, need uh, uh, that patch uh, from Brave to land in Brave Nightly to have this seamless experience that you go to the Chrome Web Store and click install and everything works. Uh, Brave wants to uh, they will use all the integration. In all the integration they do, they will probably use the stable extension ID, but we'll still be able to install, uh, do an opt in install from the beta channel uh, to iterate faster. Uh, for this specific release cycle, I think we will have the next stable in about two weeks due to those issues. All right. Uh, sorry for. Uh, multitasking is not my best skill. So, uh, any more questions to me, or can we move on? All right, uh, Diego, what's new on your end? Hey, everyone. It's great to share my screen. <clears throat> can you guys see? Yeah. So, uh, last week I've been adding, I've been working in Protoscope. I've been adding the ability to override external errors. What does this mean? So when you're in a lesson in Proto School, if something fails that, uh, well, it, it's your fault, but for example, imagine that an error comes from IPFS. Before, we weren't able to, to tweak the messages. Uh, for example, this one. This no child name pass to add link. This is a, an error that comes from IPFS. But for a normal user, even for me, I look at this and this is not very clear what I should do. So with uh, a bit of a tweak. So this is an option that the tutorial authors can pass. 
and they just have to well they just pass this prop and they put they catch the errors and put uh, the messages that they want for example the message that you see before right now it says something that okay you know what to do it looks like you created a folder or whatever did you forget to include a file name in your path so the basically now we have the ability to override that errors catch uh, the errors that we want and tweak the messages so that is going to be a lot useful because, uh, because in, in the tutorial from the MFS, there are a lot of errors that comes back from IPFS. And this way, it's uh, very clear to the user what he should do. So this is a, a pull request that's being reviewed. But I think it's, we're going to merge it uh, in the future. Yeah. The other thing I, I did. I have to go to the next lesson. Okay, yeah, there's, I'm sorry, live coding, this is what happens. All right, so uh, another thing I've been working on is in some lessons, um, we ask the users, for example, when some, some, something error, or even if the user passed a lesson, we want to show him how's the, for example, his IPFS repo, what files are on it, and stuff like that. And uh, the way to do that, we were asking him or, or her to open the, the dev tools, the console to see some logs, because we are just logging stuff. That's not very user friend, friendly, so I have the feature to add another step. So you're on this lesson normally, I'm just going to copy the solution. So instead of having to open the console, when you submit something, you have your messages. And instead of this is what would show on the console, but now it adds a new step and shows here on the, on the UI. So it's so much easier on the eyes. Uh, the user doesn't have to open the dev tool because many of them doesn't even know how to do that. So everything is in the same place. And again, this for the, um, the tutorial authors, this is another prop they pass to the lesson. There's uh, everything is written in the boilerplate for you guys, uh, for those, uh, for you guys that don't know about this. When you want to create a new tutorial, you have uh, some boilerplate files, for example, uh, boilerplates for when you want to create a lesson that you need to upload files. We have a boilerplate for that. We have a boilerplate for other type of exercise. And on that boilerplate, everything is written so you know what you have to do if you want to tweak those objects. So yeah, that was it. This is another pull request that's on review. That's awesome. it for me. Yeah. Any questions? Developer ergonomics matter. Error messages matter. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the, the demo style, super helpful. Showing how it's messed up, changing in real time. Yeah. Make videos. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. In addition to this video. <laughs> But sometimes the live coding doesn't work, <laughs> as you guys could see. So yeah. Awesome. Uh, go. Hi guys. So let me share. Okay. So. Uh, what I've been doing, um, I did a couple of pull requests to fix some uh, Browserify stuff. Also, another one to fix some stuff on the CLI, make the daemon exit a little bit safer. Uh, it's not merged yet, but uh, the PR is finished. Um, I did a deep dive. Uh, about uh, IPNS over DNS with Lidl to figure out some stuff. It was really helpful. Um, we did a review session 
um, about the OKRs. Uh, a big one is that we I was able to merge the PR to remove the IPLD formats for for the browser, uh, and uh, basically the bundle size went down uh, around fifty percent, which is uh, a lot. Um, so that should be fun for the users. Um, reviewed a couple of um, blog posts. Um, I did the last uh, release of multi hashing with the callback support as a, a 0 0.6 uh, version uh, and did also the first one with a sync await um, as uh, 0 0.7. I uh, also have a, um, a pull request on almost finished to enable uh, IPFS name resolve with a, uh, an IPNS path uh, in, uh, with a domain instead of an hash, uh, which is um, which I need to to implement IPNS over DNS and is also a blocker for the browser integrations, at least Brave, probably all other ones. Um, I also reserved um, the domain ipns.workers.dev for the IPNS over workers. Um, and yeah, the IPNS over workers already did already demoed last last time we did the call. So yeah, uh, today we had a, a meeting about uh, all this stuff related to IPNS. I explained a little bit about the two implementations I'm I'm working on. Uh, I think the meeting went really well. Um, both both of, of these implementations uh, were well received, and we talked about the biggest problems uh, ahead. That's it's basically how we will handle multiple implementations and which one wins. What happens when one errors out? when publishing and then if you try to resolve with the one that's error, uh, what what we should do and stuff like that. Republishing of an IPNS record is also a big problem that we need to figure out. Uh, but it was a really helpful uh, session. We will be opening issues around these, uh, these bigger problems in the specs repo to follow up on, on, on those. And I will do next week or this week next. Um, I'll try to fix the upload, upload problems uh, that uh, Ollie reported um, because I think that's a big blocker for the GUI team. Um, I also need to add support for the file file and file list for Proto School. Uh, I need to add the pull request um, check uh, for the bundle size, so we we it's easier to keep it small. Um, yeah, and also continue IPNS over DNS. Um, basically now. Uh, what needs to be done is the resolver that will be a new package, a new module that will will run as a daemon and will serve as the uh, as the uh, as the uh, as the resolver, the authority resolver, either for uh, a PL um, domain or a user domain. Yeah, and that's it. Any questions? No. Cool. Awesome, thank you. I, I had one question real fast. If, if you have the IPNS over DNS working now, how does that performance compare to the uh, workers approach? Um, I, I don't have the DNS working right now. Uh, but I guess uh, it, it depends on the, on the, on the environment. Um, in Node, or in the server or in the machine, uh, it will probably be faster over DNS because of the, the cache, the DNS cache. Uh, in the browser, 
if if we do it, do like DNS over HTTPS, which we will probably do, it will be basically more or less the same because it's an HTTP request. But I know I don't have numbers, so that's just a guess. Yeah, I I believe it will be exactly the same if we use uh, DNS over HTTPS resolver from Cloudflare compared to workers from Cloudflare, right? <laughs> but yeah, all right. Uh, next, next is G three. All right. Can I share the right screen? Yes. Ah, so a few different things this week. Still getting uh, my uh, getting settled in. I set up last week an IFTT job to push new Stack Overflow questions tagged IPFS to a private Slack channel, and I just monitor that. And when new questions are asked, I go take a look and try to take a stab at answering some of them, which just pushed me down some interesting corners of IPFS architecture. Turns out, uh, trying to answer ter terribly formed or ill-formed Ill questions really broadens the possible answer. Uh, so the uh, time, time worth spending, because I learned a ton. Um, and then also one of the questions, uh, I couldn't reproduce the example code in the JS uh, IPFS HTTP client which led me to that repo and it was because there's a bug. So I updated the packages there, made it so that the example runs again. Um, now, I, which also made me test the other examples and found some other issues that we got to fix there. I found some stuff for that. Um, I got set up with uh, Lionel's help as a translator for the um, Chinese translation of IPFS Companion. I did a couple of translations there to kind of a fun way to work on vocabulary. Um, I read through a lot of the community metrics work since I'm going to be working on some of that for the uh, remainder of the quarter. Um, I also did a little testing of the package, in, in the bundling improvements that, uh, oh, it's gone now, that um, Hugo mentioned earlier and found that on Lighthouse we're five seconds faster in the, their worst profile, which is really, really big deal for people on, on slower connections. So that, that work of reducing the bundle size is really going to matter in the field for real people making applications that, that pull in JS, JS IPFS. Uh, and a whole, the rest of my week was a whole lot of other collaboration and, and coordination stuff, some of which will show up in the agenda in the items I added there. That's it for me. Any questions? Awesome. Did you have any issues with uh, trans effects at all? It's a little, it's a little wonky trying to figure out what's in there. That uh, so there's a glossary which is great. So you're like, okay, what is the translation for the for the word gateway? And well, you know, it's it's really different between both uh, uh, traditional and simplified. Uh, in, in Chinese, but uh, also there's no way to share that. And the, some of the words, the actual word themselves changes. Uh, so like I looked up the word for tab and the word for tab is different if you're bookmarking it or if you're uh, closing it, for example. So translating just, but the, that's more about the translations themselves and the difficulties of l 10 and generally, right? Um, but the trans effect specifically, you can't, only admins, we found out, can share a glossary. So you can't kind of see what the, the conversation around what the canonical word would be or translation would be unless you're an admin. That's a, that's a, that would be a killer feature for TransFX, I think, and really accelerate teams' ability to localize quickly, especially for, for newcomers. Mm -hmm. But especially since so much of these terms are not conversational, uh, they're very specific to the context of the UI. Um, you know, user-facing bits that are being translated there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and but otherwise, that, like pretty easy to get set up, get going. That's a, a very, very good feedback, especially like uh, I always wonder if that, just like you mentioned, the same thing has two different translations. And like in case of Polish translation, I always, I'm not sure if that was like on purpose or 
it was just basically two different people starting translating stuff and using different words for the same thing. And then they just translated 100% and half is that and half is the other. Um, that's, uh, that's been a problem. And Glossary is sort of uh, helping with that. Uh, for anyone not familiar with the process, Glossary is like a, set, a dictionary of terms, like nouns, verbs, that you can define in English. And then uh, people can, can provide a suggested translation for each language. And then when regular people are translating and that word is somewhere in that string to be translated, there's a suggestion box on the right side, I think. Um, but yeah. That's, uh, that's sort of uh, an open question, how to handle, uh, how to converge multiple translations of the same term across multiple projects. We have a translation memory, which sort of help, helps. It's like a the dynamically created glossary of previously translated terms, uh, but it's like ongoing process. Are those the suggestions that show up? Like yeah. once you start typing, you start to get suggestions? Yeah. All right, uh, Eric? I have to reprogram my, I, I have my lock corner down in the lower left, which is kind of the same way I needed to go to hit the mute button. <laughs> uh, but I really I don't have much reason to unmute because I don't have much um, worth reporting in the IPFS land this week. I've been distracted mostly with creating, uh, designing a Filecoin brand guide trying to do a, an online brand guide for Filecoin. Uh, hopefully, I, I think next week, I'll be able to jump back on IPFS, but womp womp. Fingers crossed. All right, Jim? Um, so, not a lot to report like on from DDC work, but uh, I, there's a, I got tagged on Twitter by uh, Michael Rogers, uh, and he seems to know everybody in uh, web browsers and, and internet space. So I'm going to just share my screen because I just thought it was sort of funny. Um, it's related to, um, so yeah, where's Michael? He take, takes me in this thread. I'll show you the whole thread. The guy who wrote Preact, which is like the, the lightweight version of React, everybody uses piled on to it. And then I made an answer, and then Brendan Ike like uh, he tweeted it. So it's related to the um, the Cloudflare announcement about AMP. Um, where is it? AMP Real Earl, which is basically the they were just waiting for all the web package stuff from Google to get into the mainstream Chrome version, and now now that it's out there, I imagine. Um, They've launched their product where you can do the the web packages on Cloudflare, and it sounds like they have a service where they they'll actually you don't have to go buy a cert now; they'll give you the cert for free. So that's really really exciting. So um, I'll have to try this. I haven't really tried it yet, but theoretically they'll publish the S SXG files. So if I just grab the SXG file off of Cloudflare and drop it on IPFS, it should work with our gateway, right, Lido? Oh yeah, I think uh, right now you don't even need to be, like origin trial ended. Uh, yeah. For anyone uh, on, not familiar, origin trial was uh, the, the period when it was like an experimental feature and you had to add a special HTTP header to your server to enable SGX. But I think that ended uh, a few months ago and now it's in the, Stable channel of Chrome, I think. Yeah, so um, let's see. Um, so here's the thread. Um, so Malt, Malt Ubel is Cranforce. Uh, he's the guy who created uh, AMP. So so that he started this thread here. And then the guy does PREAC is IPFS, IPFS. Uh, <laughs> he sees Michael. Michael mentions me. CRDTs for some reason, and I linked to our issue. Um, then I, I did that. And so um, I'm feeling like I should actually like revisit the stuff I haven't touched since December and see if it works. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. That's actually a very good. Like, if some if someone wants a quick uh, primer on what signed HTTP exchanges exchanges are and basically how we started experimenting with it and some learning material, there's uh, an issue in in web browsers uh, repo when we documented mm -hmm. our adventures with it. So, uh, yeah, but it was always like, extremely painful to use it. Um, like in the very, very early days, you had to do your own SSL privately signed certs. Um, and then around November, um, they put it as a origin trial and you could buy a cert for lots and lots of money um, from DigiCert, I think. And then, um, but then the origin trial, so Lydell had to work to get that installed on our public gateway. So that was a lot of work. Um, but it actually worked. And then I happened to be in Tokyo, so I uh, actually took our, the experiment I had done, made it work with the public gateway, and then I actually went in, because they do all the work on web package at the Google office in Tokyo. So I went and showed it to them. I met the entire team there. And they were all really excited about it, actually. It wasn't really, it's not really been designed for this use case, um, but it was, I was, I, I was thinking about doing a blog post about it, but it's just way too complicated to explain it. And like, you still had to have like the pre-release version of Chrome and you had to get these like search from a specific sort of place. And um, it's, um, so we could use this for AMP packages. The use case I had in mind still involved using a service worker. So you could do, put a service worker, take your website, we can it all in the, into these SXG files, and then you could load it straight off of IPFS, and it would look like it would say HTTPS at the top, and it would all be signed properly. But in order to get them to load, you still had to have a service worker in behind the scenes. So I don't know if that buys you so much because you could still load things with a service worker even if they weren't signed. So, <laughs> so, but it's, it's sort of interesting that it's out there now. So. Um, yeah. yeah, it's for sure easier to experiment. So uh, yeah, now someone can just add to IPFS and play with it with loading from multiple gateways without having the special yeah. header now. Like, like I was thinking it would be a good way to sort of almost get like a beaker browser type of experience for publishing flow because you could just gener generate these S S S SXG files if you had all the search properly and you could push them up to IPFS and you could browse them but you still had to have the service worker load, which wouldn't load over the SXG over the SXG files, and um, there was still. And the biggest drawback is the SXG files. You signed them for when I was playing with it. It was only seven days, so they'd expire after seven days. So you'd have to continually republish these things over and over and over again. So, yep. Uh, in the spec. I've read some time ago, and I think it was changed by, since then, but uh, it said that one of the purposes of web package is like, uh, generally archiving. Mm -hmm. And the seven day window, they, they were not sure how to create design user experience around this seven day window. Basically, the goal was that after seven days, you still should be able to load stuff, but there would be some indication that it's like an archival yeah, I think I saw somebody and they're talking about like basically do like a time machine. Like you set your browser clock back in time to, you know, which sort of makes sense to me. That's sort of cool. But uh, um, yeah. I don't know how we'd use it, turn it into a general, like what I, what I was thinking of doing with it. So, yeah, I, I believe uh, we need uh, some uh, like additional time for experimentation. And it was also right. yeah, considered uh, harmful was the other problem with it. So, um, yeah. Uh, but that was like for the B2, and now it's like B3 version, which requires like additional round of review. Okay. Uh, so it's like an open, open topic. <laughs> I <believe. laughs> All right, uh, Terry. Yeah. So I have um, when it looks like I haven't been doing anything usually because I've been working on camp. I think that's actually the case right now. So I've done a lot of work on offline camp this week. We're hoping to launch the well last week. We're hoping to launch this week. Um, 
So stay tuned for that. Um, we have new proto school chapters in Hangzhou, which I don't know how to pronounce, and Taipei. Um, and then we're repurposing a call. So starting tomorrow, the call that used to be sort of for the IPFS community working group in general will be specifically for proto school. So for both people who want to contribute and build tutorials and people who are leading local chapters and want to share what's been working well, etc. So it's public. I dropped in a link to the issue. So as we do with a lot of other calls, I'll be sharing links to video recordings and meeting notes in there. So feel free to follow that issue if you want to get those little pings and reminders um, from GitHub in your email. Um, everyone's welcome to come to that. And I've been out sick, so. Um, I have not, GitHub says I have not personally been very helpful with the MFS tutorial this week, but um, Diogo has made the very good suggestion that we kind of merge, like comment out all of the stuff that's actually the MFS tutorial and get merged all of the functionality we have now around the file uploads, et cetera, and then create a new branch for that. So you'll see a new branch for the existing work coming soon. Um, and I'm continuing on with those lessons. I'm definitely feeling less blocked now in the new functionality that Diogo showed you in terms of being able to overwrite error messages and display things in the console is gonna make the MFS tutorial much better than it could be otherwise, so that's awesome. Um, and then the other stuff that's next for me is of course the offline camp launch and then better instructions for tutorial authors as people start really digging into content for IPFS camp. So if any of you are working on tutorials for that and have questions about how to get started with building, please do reach out. I need, I guess I need to circle around with uh, David or someone and clarify whether it's okay to be uh, kind of building all of that content in the public for camp using whatever procedures we normally would for proto school or whether we need to hide it a bit more to make IPFS camp suspenseful. So I'll double check on that. Um, yeah, I think that's the summary for me right now. Going to see the doctor about the wrists in an hour. So we'll see what he says. Finally, she, whoever, I don't know who I'm seeing. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, any questions for Terry? All right, uh, I think we are at the end of uh, team updates. So let's scroll all the way up. And the first agenda item, I think all agenda items are by Dietrich. So take over. They'll be, they'll be very short ones though, I promise. Uh, so the first one, as I have a project not directly related, but if any of you are working in IPFS core and are working also in Filecoin, if you know which components in IPFS world are utilized by Filecoin, please send me a message with the information that you have about that. We're collecting that information for various reasons, but it is pretty important. So I'm gonna be talking, of course, getting this information from the people directly working on it as well. But I thought if anybody here also had uh, knowledge about that and had played around on Falcon Fridays or helped on Filecoin issues and knew which exact components and repos, uh, were being used in IPFS, of IPFS being used by Filecoin. Uh, shoot me an email or a private message, that'd be great. Um, the, the second issue is a little more fun, more like exercise, pop quiz, writing time for all of you to get your pencils ready. The, uh, we had an item for last week, but last week got, got queued up real full uh, to talk about language. And it's one of the things that came up probably 38 different times during the two, three days in Lisbon that we were all together. Um, every time somebody said pitting, somebody else would say, we really need to figure out what that means and whether we should use it in user-facing things. Uh, saving, sharing, uh, Lytle and, and Ugo and I talked a, a bit about kind of these core uh, primitive use cases uh, that you can do as a user in the browser with IPFS. Uh, you know, uh, saving, reading what you saved, sharing what you saved, and publishing new things. Uh, around that language, there's a pretty big, if we you know, use that as like, okay, first baseline, that, that's how 
users think about doing those things and correlate with existing services that provide these same similar types of functionality that IPFS provides or can. Uh, our language is pretty different. So um, I was talking about that with Megahertz, who I met in over video, just having a chat. And uh, she shared this video in the, in the lobby, actually, about language. I should actually link the video here, too, um, which is worth reading or worth watching and listening to about the importance of language and how it, how it, it shows up in both uh, the design process, the product development process, and then ultimately in, in the hands of the people that use the things we make every day. Uh, but I wanted to take from that, there's a slide in there uh, in that in that talk, and I want to do a quick exercise. So there's LinkedIn EtherCalc there, which isn't really the ideal place to dump all this information. But if you could take one minute, open that sheet, and add whatever your thoughts are about each of these different components, the nouns and the verbs, the people, the actions, the places in IPFS world. And it doesn't matter what part of the product you work on. It doesn't matter if you're GUI or core or companion or proto school or any of these things, uh, feel free to duplicate free form. Uh, you can write something about uh, your favorite octopus or aquarium. That's fine. But uh, put, just put your thoughts down, whatever comes first for uh, just, just a very short period of time. Yeah, Jim. Can you, can you just um, screen share and just do an example so we can see what yeah. we're supposed to do? Sure. Can I screen share? The green share button in the middle yep. at the bottom. And yes, so people, an example. So somebody's already taken a bunch of tasks and added them in there, and that's great. So people would be like uh, IPFS companion user, or at a more uh, user centered approach, there, a writer, somebody who wants to write something and publish it to IPFS or somebody who wants to uh, save something or share something. Uh, features and places would be like uh, web UI or the uh, uh, companion button. Uh, some of the paths, like those are some of the actions that we talked about. Um, like I want to, and these are just my interpretations. I really am like pretty open here. It's getting as, as broad a, a divergent set of thoughts on this as possible is really what's going to help us over time be able to refine and improve this language and get the broadest possible sense of what you all as, as authors, contributors, participants in the system uh, are thinking about it. But this is a very uh, low, low, uh, high bandwidth, short time frame exercise. Uh, just take a minute, dump your thoughts in there. And then uh, I'll probably collect them and then share them at the next meeting. There are some common, common denominators. Just to clarify, like the word goes in column A, and then we answer the things related to the word in B through D or however far over it goes. Yeah, I think I think look at the task actions column. That's a, an exact a perfect example. But those would be yeah, those would be on the oh, left. It was hand. it was correct before. Okay, but there was it. That's right. The nouns would go in A because the nouns aren't. So these are different verbs, tasks and actions, goals, opposing actions. What can I screw up? But it's not like, let's say you put upload, you go right to places and write download, or it's. If, it's uh, not no, like I think opposing action. Different lists of things. Yeah, they're different lists. So opposing actions would be like, I want to unpublish, maybe. Okay, or, so there's no left to right thing here. Right. This is just a bunch of nope. individual just lists. A, just a bunch of columns. Okay. Individual lists. Okay. That's, that's my two minutes. Thank, thanks for your assistance. Much appreciated.
so quiet. Everybody's so busy. Thank you. One one of my items got deleted on me. <laughs> I think this needs a CRDT. <laughs> if, I'm I'm waiting. I have my I have I cloned the peer based stuff of that example, <laughs> but uh, I haven't got as far as actually writing something with it. Uh, uh, that's a that's a question I had. Um, what is the status of peer base? I don't know if this is the right place to ask that question. Um, it's on it's ongoing. Um, yeah. So um, I'm I'm Mr. Peer Base. So that's me. But, um, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Okay, that that was that was way over a minute. We could we could probably uh, uh close it up now. Feel free to continue adding more, but I think uh, we don't want to keep this synchronous connection over high bandwidth HD video going. Uh, uh, related, if if people have uh, more narrative thoughts, they should feel free to to drop them into the form that I just put in the chat. I'll buy you all a virtual beer. Uh, I can access that document because I have to have a protocol.ai email address. This is a known issue. So, yeah, I reckon it is. Yeah, I just got one. It helps a lot. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Although you should be able to open the sharing on the Google form, right? Make it available to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, switch sharing option to everyone with yeah. with the link. Diogo will not be silenced. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Try it again. Perfect. Thank you. It's like pair programming, but for G Suite. <laughs> That's the limit of my program. <laughs> Just hit the ceiling. Okay, I think I think that's it. For anything else on the agenda today for anyone? Action items. I, as a note taker, I will add notes about the two agenda items I have. I believe we are at the end. Is there anything anyone wants us to discuss or do we want to get five minute bonus time? Gonna practice my, my break dancing bonus. for the next five minutes. Should should we continue recording? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye everybody. All right, week. guys. Thank Bye. you. See you same time next Bye. week. See ya.